Ulam Muhammad's ruled from 1951 to 1955. We're going to see some of the four mark questions first of all as to who Ulam Muhammad was, what were the movements that were introduced during his time period, what were the contributions made. So Ulam Muhammad um, was the first finance minister of Pakistan in 1947, and he became the governor general of Pakistan in, in 1951. All right, Khwaja. Nazimuddin was the prime minister after Liaquat Ali Khan, and Khwaja Nazimuddin was dismissed uh, by Ghulam Muhammad. All right. So during the time of Ghulam Muhammad, you, uh, if you want to, if you guys want to make a note of the ministries, first of all, the um, the first prime minister of Pakistan was Liaquat Ali Khan, and the second prime minister of Pakistan was Khwaja Nazimuddin. The first Governor General of Pakistan was Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and the second Governor General of Pakistan was Ghulam Muhammad. So during the time period of Ghulam Muhammad, Liaquat Ali Khan was uh, sorry, Khwaja Nazimuddin was removed from office, and Ali Bogra, Muhammad Ali Bogra, was appointed as the new Prime Minister of Pakistan. So now at this point in time, Ghulam Muhammad is the Governor General, and Ali Bogra is the Prime Minister. Ghulam Muhammad resigned in 1955, and he died in 1956. Anti-Qadiani movement was established during the during the time period of Ghulam Muhammad. It was formed by religious groups during the time of Ghulam Muhammad. Its purpose was to declare Qadianis as non-Muslims and to and to remove them from the key posts of Pakistan. This caused worse law and order situation in the country. However, the situation was controlled when martial law was imposed. Planning commission. Okay, another very important step of step of Ghulam Muhammad was to introduce a planning commission. So, guys, the purpose of these planning commissions. um was to oversee the economic development of the country so this planning commission was responsible to present a plan of 5 to 6 years to the government of pakistan as to how the economic development will take place in the country so what happened was this planning commission presented a 6 year plan and then it presented a 5 year plan so a total of 11 year of planning so you could say in form of two two small plans a 6 year and 5 year plan they presented a major 11 year plan uh to oversee the developmental projects in the country okay that is it then what was the bill of powers of governor general okay so this bill of powers was presented by ali bogra and the purpose of the bill of power was to basically limit the powers of the governor general so this if you if you read these last four points these points are exactly what the bill said all ministers including prime minister would be members of assembly the assembly would approve the cabinet governor general would take up advice from his ministers when ghulam mohammed got to know of this bill he dismissed the assembly which caused political crisis in pakistan okay so what happened was you see how ali bogra was appointed by ghulam mohammed and one of the reasons as to why khwaja nazimuddin was dismissed and ali bogra was appointed could have been that ghulam mohammed wanted to control the prime minister he wanted to somehow in dominate the prime minister this is why he appointed his own person ali bogra was the uh, foreign minister ali he he he, he was uh, his uh, you could say post was changed to prime minister immediately and the reason was you you could you could maybe assume that one of the reasons for this act could have been that ghulam mohammed wanted to control the prime minister himself and wanted to um have all the power with himself so ali bogra wasn't a puppet leader what he did was he immediately limited the powers of the governor general first of all he stated that all the ministers including the prime minister will be the members of assembly and assembly will approve the cabinet so cabinet is sort of a branch of government that decides on important matters and that cabinet will also be approved by the assembly so all the members of the assembly to all those ministers the prime minister those members will be approving a cabinet secondly the governor general will have to take advice from the ministers of the assembly including the prime minister so this meant that governor general was not able to implement or pass or remove any law on his own he had to take advice from his ministers and then when okay so because ghulam mohammed saw this act as a you could say a power seizing act he he she saw a loss of power and he didn't expect ali bogra to take such strong measures so he immediately dismissed the assembly okay you see when the assembly is dismissed what is an assembly it's the parliament of a country it's a national assembly yeah and all of the important matters are discussed in the parliament 
all of the, uh, the, the, the opposition members, the proposition members, they discuss the important matters, they debate on the important matters, and then they present certain bills uh, after uh, after a, after an approval from the majority of their parliament members so this parliament the assembly was dismissed and when this happens uh, the, the political crisis cannot be avoided so exactly uh, at this point in time when gulam muhammad dismissed the assembly there was a political crisis in pakistan because there was no assembly all right guys uh, are you clear up till now i hope the structure of the government the dynamics, the the uh, political activities that were taking place uh, are clear to you. Any questions? No, should we move on then? All right, guys, you can stop me anytime to ask questions because section three is all about the politics and the political developments of Pakistan, the ministries, the biographies of the leaders. So it's important that you guys understand each and every point when it's discussed in class. You can stop me there and then if you want me to, uh, if you want me to clarify a certain point, and please keep taking notes again and again. I'll stress on this point that notes are very, very important They help you stay uh, active during the class once you engage with the written content on the screen. All right. It's very important to stay engaged with the content that's displayed on your screen. Yes, Habiba, do you have a question? Sir, how did Ghulam Muhammad appoint Ali as the Prime Minister when he was the Governor General? Governor General had the most powers at that, at, at that point because Jinnah was the first Governor General and because there was no constitution. So there wasn't any formal uh, bill that stated, okay, Governor General, but there was no bill limiting or uh, giving certain amount of power to the Governor General. So they were doing anything they wanted to do. This is this is what Ali Bogra uh, was against initially, and this is why he limited the powers. All right. So there was no constitution and there were no boundaries as to what could a governor general do at that time. Uh, okay, what was the Malvi Tamizuddin case? Okay, so what happened was we, we, we talked about a political crisis over here when Ghulam Muhammad was dismissed. Uh, sorry, when Ghulam Muhammad dismissed the assembly and uh, his powers were limited, Ali Bogra tried to curb these powers. Uh, what happened was this case uh, was basically taken to the court now. Malvi the Muzuddin was the speaker of the assembly that was dissolved. And the, the speaker, Malvi the Muzuddin, he took the case to the Sindh High Court. And Sindh High Court ruled in favor of Malvi the Muzuddin. Okay, then what happened was now because the Sin High Court's rule, the, the Sin High Court's verdict was against Ghulam Muhammad, Ghulam Muhammad challenged the case in Federal High Court. So Federal High Court is, you could say, somewhat superior to the provincial courts. There's this, there's one Supreme Court, there are federal courts, and then there are provincial courts. So Sin High Court is a provincial court of Sindh, and Federal High Court was a step superior to the Sindh High Court. Ghulam Muhammad's case, Ghulam Muhammad challenged the Malvi the Muzuddin's case in uh, Federal High Court. And that is when um, Ghulam, the, 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 the Federal High Court ruled in favor of Ghulam Muhammad. And they said that this dissolution of assembly was justified. Justice Munir was the um, Chief Justice. Uh, okay, so then what happened was, uh, when when Ghulam Muhammad when Ghulam Muhammad's dissolution was justified, it was said that the Governor General had emergency powers, and emergency powers meant that any leader, any political leader, could do anything if this situation demanded. So what they so basically this dissolution act was presented under a use of emergency power. They said because the situation demanded, it was important for the governor general to dissolve the assembly because the prime minister was trying to limit his powers. This law, the use of emergency powers, uh, this usage has been misused a lot of times in the history of Pakistan. A lot, a lot of the leaders, you'll see a lot of the governor generals and the prime ministers have, have misused their emergency powers. This is the first example when Ghulam Muhammad's emergency powers were misused and he basically dissolved the assembly because his powers were somehow limited. 
he wanted to control the prime minister. The prime minister in return tried to control him. So he basically challenged him in, in this way. And the federal high court ruled in favor of Ghulam Muhammad. And this is how the politics became unstable in the country. You'll see how this instability grew and how the leaders, how the future leaders will, will, will uh, they misuse the, the, the powers in under the title of emergency powers. Uh, Malvi Tamizuddin obviously uh, lost this case and Ghulam Muhammad, um, he, he, he was justified at the end. Guys, uh, is this Malvi Tamizuddin case clear to all of you? This is how the situation developed afterwards. Now, uh, why did Ghulam Muhammad dismiss Khwaja Nazimuddin? Um, okay, so this is pretty open-ended question because I was again and again saying that you can assume certain reasons here. Uh, the, Ghulam Muhammad's response to what Ali Bogra, when Ali Bogra tried to limit his powers, by that response, we can see that Ghulam Muhammad wasn't expecting this from Ali Bogra. And why was he not expecting that from, from Ali Bogra as prime minister? Because maybe the reason for appointing Ali Bogra was that the Ghulam Muhammad wanted to somehow control him. To somehow he wanted somehow the power to remain in his hands. So the Governor General Ghulam Muhammad dismissed Khwaja Nazimuddin on charges of not handling the poor situation of the country. Guys, so you don't have to write this as the reason. The, the reasons that I'm telling you over here, okay, Ghulam Muhammad wanted to control Nazimuddin. You don't have to write that in the exam paper because that is that, that, that isn't what your textbook says, all right? We need to stay somewhat neutral in between, all right? So Ghulam Muhammad's reason to dismiss Khwaja Nazimuddin was that Khwaja Nazimuddin did not handle the situation very well. Okay, and that is what you guys are going to write, okay? This was the charge upon Khwaja Nazimuddin. And then Ghulam, uh, Ali Bogra was appointed as prime minister. Ghulam Muhammad thought that Ali Bogra was more capable of handling the situation of the country. This is why he was appointed. And he knew that because the country was at a very crucial point, all of the leaders were trying to establish a constitution. So appointment of Ali Bogra, uh, according to Ghulam Muhammad, uh, might have somehow maybe accelerated the process of the development of the constitution. That is another reason present. I mean, that was the that was the reason presented by Ghulam Muhammad at that time. Food crisis of 1950s, Pakistan was facing these crises. Uh, during the time period of Ghulam Muhammad and Liaqsari Khan, the law and order of the, of the, of the country was were destroyed because the people were protesting against the government. They were demanding the, the, these basic necessities. So USA donated 1 million tons of wheat to Pakistan. Canada and Australia also donated uh, food resources, wheat um, to, to, to the country to somehow overcome these uh, food crises because Pakistan was obviously a newly established state. It didn't have enough resources to fulfill the needs of the people. So we had to rely on these uh, foreign donations. Okay, now the CETO and CENTO, the, 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 the two another very important uh, events that took place during the 1950s. So Pakistan joined CETO and it joined CENTO as well. So CETO is basically a trade organization. Uh, the, 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 the abbreviation CETO means Southeast Asian Treaty Organization. And it was sponsored by US to basically uh, counter this communism in Southeast Asia. So Soviet Union, the USSR, Russia and US had been uh, had been the, you could say, in, in conflict for quite some time. And because of the, the, the growing power of Soviet Union in Southeast Asia, US tried to counter that communism. And this is why they established this treaty organization. Pakistan joined it in 1954. Um, all of the countries of the, um, uh, the CETO had to protect themselves in case of foreign attack, attack by a communist state, meaning thereby Russia, if Russia, if USSR attacks any of the countries of CETO, they will back each other up, they will support each other. Pakistan resigned from CETO in 1972 because the countries of CETO did not help Pakistan in its wars against India. You're going to study these details later on in 1970s and then when in the, in the 62 war, the 70 wars, all right? We're going to study these details later on. But for now, just know that Pakistan 
joined CETO in 1954 and left it in 1972. It joined because it was expecting a cooperation from all of the Southeastern countries, Southeast Asian countries, because uh, obviously Pakistan, as a newly established state, Pakistan needed to have a strong alliance at that time. What in 1972, when, we, when, when, they, when the country saw that they weren't supported uh, in, in its wars against India, so they resigned from CETO. CETO is generally considered a failure because in, internal conflicts and disputes hindered general use of the CETO military. CETO was dissolved in thir on 30th June 1977 after many members lost interest and withdrew. So yeah, in 1977, this was the year when CETO was officially dissolved, okay? CENTO. CENTO was the Central Treaty Organization. It is also known as the Baghdad Pact. And it is also known as the Middle East Treaty Organization, METO, METO. All right. It was formed in 1955 by Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and UK. So these five countries established this organization known as CENTO. Uh, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Turkey, and UK. Um, Iraq withdraw, withdrew from CENTO in 1959. Uh, again, it was a US-sponsored anti-communist regional military bloc because US was trying to counter the growth of uh, communism in the Southeast Asian states. Again, the growth of USSR. So again, US had, I mean, you had you, US provided a lot of military and economic aid to the countries uh, of CENTO. And yeah, they, they were also ready to help these countries in wars. Uh, Pakistan, again, Pakistan did not receive support uh, from the alliances of CETO in, in the wars against India. So this is why this pact was also dissolved in 1979. But why do we study these during the time of Ghulam Muhammad? Because it was during his tenure that Pakistan joined these two organizations. Pakistan was a founding member of CENTO and had joined CETO during, uh, in, in the 1950s. All right, guys, the seven mark questions now. Do you, uh, once, you, once you take the lecture, yesterday's lecture of Yaqt Ali Khan, you'll, you, you'll, you'll come to know that uh, the Basic Principles Committee was, the, was a committee established by Yaqt Ali Khan in order to draft, a, draft the first report of constitution and they presented a, the first report named as the object resolution, which was criticized and it was, it was later rejected. So during the time of Ghulam Muhammad, the Basic Principles Committee presented a second report now. The, this committee was constantly working to draft a constitution, and this is when they presented the second report. Um, what the second report stated was that um, th th there will be different seats from people, some people will be appointed from the West Pakistan, some people will be appointed from the East Pakistan. But again, the seats were not equal. There was a disparity. East Pakistanis wanted a greater say. They wanted more seats. Uh, and hence, they rejected the second report as well. Secondly, um, again, it was opposed by some certain political leaders. They were not satisfied. Some certain religious leaders were not satisfied as well. They thought that it's, it's, it's not uh, on, on the laws of Islam. However, the political leaders thought that the religious leaders were given a lot of power. And it was, I mean, extremely Islamic. This, is, this was one reason as to why the political leaders opposed the second report. Uh, secondly, minorities' rights were not protected. Uh, so minorities of Pakistan also protested and they rejected the support. They wanted more rights uh, to the, to, uh, given to the minorities. West Pakistan, again, had more seats and more rights in this case. Urdu was declared as the, as the official language in the first report, and there was no change made as regards to the language in the second report. Uh, secondly, because the... the the second report also stated that the constitution, according to the constitution of Pakistan, if let's say they, they decide to make up a constitution on this report, the prime minister, the ruler of the country would be a Muslim. So this was another point as to why the minorities had rejected this report. Why were there constitutional crises between 1954 and 1955? So guys, we're talking about the crisis when Ali Bogra was appointed as the prime minister and when Ali Bogra decided to limit the powers of Ghulam Muhammad and when Ghulam Muhammad challenged the case in, uh, when Ghulam Muhammad dissolved the assembly, when Malvi Damizuddin challenged the case in the assembly, when 
the Sindh High Court ruled in favor of Malvi Dumizuddin and the Federal High Court ruled in favor of Ghulam Muhammad. So this is the political crisis that we are talking about. You guys can go through this question on your own because we have discussed this in detail. You guys just need to write the three reasons as to why there was a political crisis. You can talk about the dissolution of assembly, first of all. You can talk about how Justice Munir uh, ruled in favor of Ghulam Muhammad. And then you can talk about a lack of leadership in general because there were so many dismissals. A lot of leaders were dismissed during that time. Khaja Nazimuddin was dismissed missed on a very weaker, uh, um, you could say, uh, reasons. There was no reason to dismiss him at that time. Uh, Jinnah was, I mean, Jinnah died just a year after the independence. Uh, th there was no strong leader to get the country out of the political crisis at that time. So this is what you guys will be talking about in this question. And then there comes the 14 mark question. How successful was the ministry of Ghulam Muhammad during 1951 and 1955? You need to generally talk about the successes and the failures. Before we read this question, I want you guys to talk. Let's discuss about the ministry because we've, we've, just, we've, we've studied the entire ministry, the contributions, the things that were failing, the crisis, the attempts to make a constitution. What do you guys think now? How successful was Wala Muhammad? Gee, guys, I'm looking forward to your responses. I would say he was generally unsuccessful. Okay, and why would you say that? Because of the second report. Okay, so you're saying that they were not able to make a constitution? Yeah, because there were more failures in the second report and they weren't fixed. Okay, that's one reason. Hmm. And there were a dispute between the ministers and the generals. Yeah, yeah, okay. Political crisis. Amna, would you like to add anything? So, and because Bala Muhammad just replaced Ali Bhogra with uh, the Khaja Nazim again. So, he mm. was trying to just work, just get the powers and make everyone his own. And so, that so he could just rule it. And he was not making any good reforms or good things for the, uh, for the country. He was just okay. having his own fun. All right, all right. And he was just competing for the power because, as, uh, if he fought with the Maulana and all of those people, uh -huh. because it seems like he was just playing with the power. Huh. Oh, all right. Okay. Fine. And okay, because in in this question you will also be asked to write a few successes. So can you guys think of some successes from this tenure? Can we talk about how he was successful in resolving the food crisis of Pakistan? He asked US, Canada, and Australia for help, and those crises were resolved. Another success was the second report itself. Okay, second report faced criticism. Yes, that is a different thing. It wasn't passed, but just presenting a report was another step to making constitution. So this is also a success that they were still trying to make a constitution. Okay. What else? Sir, will the will the Cento and Mento be a success? Cito and Cento, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that is also a success. Pakistan was finally developing relations with uh, the other Southeast Asian countries. It was getting support from the US as well. Um, guys, there's, there's another failure, the Qadiani uh, movement. Uh, when they started declaring Qadianis as non-Muslims. So people started protesting against this movement as well. So, uh, and obviously it caused the law and order situation of the country to get very worse. So you need to talk about this as well. Let's read the question now. Let's see what reasons they've discussed here. Um, so, okay. Number one, the first failure was the dismissal of Fajan Azamuddin as the prime minister. 
गवर्नर जनरल जनरलिंग All right. Second, another reason why the Ministry of Ulama Muhammad was unsuccessful was due to the Malvi Tamizuddin case. Malvi Tamizuddin was the Speaker of Dissolved Assembly who took the case of this dissolution to Sindh High Court, where he won the case. But Ulama Muhammad took the case to Federal High Court, where Justice Muni justified the dissolution of assembly by giving plea that the Governor General can dismiss the assembly if it was a necessity. This decision of Justice Muni caused political instability, which was a big failure for the Ministry of Ulama Muhammad. All right. So we've discussed the two reasons. Number one, dismissal of Fauzan Azabuddin. Second, dismissal of the assembly and the ruling of uh, federal high court in favor of Ghulam Muhammad. The third failure of Ghulam Muhammad was that when Ali Bogra was appointed as prime minister after this dismissal of Fauzan Azabuddin, Bogra presented a bill to curb the powers of the governor general. He pr- approved the bill. When Ghulam Muhammad got to know of this, he straight straight away dismissed the assembly. Therefore, this caused political crisis in the government. Uh, collapsed. It was considered a failure for Ali Muhammad. Why? Because Governor General cannot dismiss the assembly. An assembly, the parliament, is very important for a country. To for the people of the country, the, the leaders in the opposition and leaders uh, in the government to discuss important matters, to debate on these matters, and to present resolutions. When there will be no parliament, obviously all of the important matters will not be discussed, and that is a failure of the government. Uh, okay. Another failure of the government was. the failure to make constitution for the country basic principles committee presented another draft but it faced much criticism the draft of the constitution was sent back to basic principles committee for reconsideration but it left the issue of language and equal number of seats on assembly so this ministry also failed to provide constitution to the country now there were some achievements number one the food crisis how the government deal with the food crisis we already discussed that number two the and okay they've written anti gadani movement in success religious groups alimaz and pakistan had state and anti gadani movement the objective of it was to declare gadani as non muslims and to remove them from all the keepers of pakistan due to the severe worst law in our region country but mashallah was okay so yeah so what they're talking about uh, uh, gadani movement as a success in this question is uh, you guys should talk about how the the martial law dealt with the situation oh okay, yeah so this reason can be written as a success as a failure if you want to write it as as a failure you'll just talk about the law and order situation the protests the response of the people when this movement started and if you want to write this as a success you'll talk about how how martial law was imposed and how the situation was was controlled later on all right so this reason could be written as a success and as a failure but it it, it depends as to how you analyze this reason okay so they've written it as a success because martial law was imposed and the situation was controlled effectively uh planning commission was an achievement of the ministry of ghulam muhammad it was made by khwaja nazimuddin it was initially a six years plan but later made a five years plan the responsibility of planning commission was to do developments in different sectors of pakistan the board however was in charge of of, of supervising the development projects this is considered as an achievement because it provided a work for future developments in pakistan so guys this planning commission the total 11 years of planning was also a success and then you will be writing one evaluation at the end please let me know if there's anything that is not clear to you okay so i'm assuming you guys I've understood everything. You guys have made the notes as well. Um, the assignment will be uploaded on the Google Classroom right now, right after. In fact, let me do that right now. Just okay. I'll I'll end the meeting and I'll upload the new assignment on Google Drive. Sorry, on the Google Classroom. The due date for that assignment will be ten a.m. tomorrow morning. So, you guys, you need to first of all submit the yesterday's assignment, which was due today at ten. you need to get that done as soon as possible and then this new assignment which is due tomorrow morning 10 am you guys have made the notes i yeah this lecture will be available tomorrow morning after 10 so you guys will be just depending on the notes that you guys have made and the discussion that we've done in the classroom to attempt the questions all right um liaqat ali khan's lecture is there on the drive but it is only there till till, till 10 pm tonight okay so if you guys want to study from that lecture you guys have time till 10 pm uh to attempt the questions as well and to make notes if you want to 
the new lecture this today's lecture will be uploaded at 10 a.m tomorrow why because Ahmed has just texted me on whatsapp because he needs the lecture uh, and it will be there just for a short while but again the assignment from this lecture is due before 10 okay i hope this is clear to everyone yeah 10 a.m will be the due date for the, uh, the, the time for the assignment tomorrow okay so i'll end the meeting now um just make sure to submit the assignments on time. I'll see you guys tomorrow.